All right. So the first question on the lab was just write a program that allows the user to enter a grade scored in a programming class. If they scored 100, then notify them that they got a perfect score. So I'm only going over the non-bolded parts, by the way, just so that everyone has a baseline. And I'm going to do them all in, in the same file, and then I'm going to um, update it as we go. Uh, so this one is just a recap, really, of C out and C in. And it says, if they scored 100, notify them that they got a perfect score. So make sure you include the header, and then um, set the grade. And if the grade is equal to 100, all you have to do is say, hey, All right, so this program just asks for a score. If I type in anything other than 100, it'll just exit. 42, nothing else happens, and it exits. However, if I type in 100, it says you got a perfect score. Cool. Questions on this one? All right, so let's do number two. Write a program that asks for a choice between five favorite games. Allow them to pick a game by entering one through five and output which game they chose. So in this case here, I'm going to get rid of all this. If anyone actually needs this, let me know. Um, it's the best way for me to save this stuff. I'm going to save this as. So now, I'm going to present with a choice of five different video games. So I can say, hey, of course, Overwatch is there. Can't help it. And then I'll do this five more times. I think it's TF Team Fortress, right? It's like a new new patch for Team Fortress. <laughs> Team Fortress. <laughs> no, there's not. Did it, did it not make sense from Half Life Three? I think there's like a Diablo 5 in China or something crazy like that. I've seen it. Have you ever not? I can't wait for Half Life 3 to come out. Hey, so what's going on with the Chinese Overwatch? You know, I don't know. I don't, I'm not really sure what's going on right now with it. Is it Chinese Overwatch too? It's called Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is the one. You guys haven't seen Diablo 5? <laughs> I think it's funny. I was actually looking for a copy of this in China when I went. I couldn't <laughs> find it. <laughs> Apparently, it's like a it's like Diablo 2, but with like some mods installed on it. But yeah, I'm on the hunt for Diablo 4 though. I don't. There is no Diablo 4 as far as I know in China even. Mm-hmm. Three, four, five. 
So this is just setting up an if statement that chooses between these. You could also say else. Oops. So you can pick one of these. I'll pick uh, Diablo 4, so it'll say Diablo 4. Cool. Or I can pick uh, Overwatch. So there is another way you can do this by using arrays and loops as well. So if you wanted to, you can use. Um, Can do this. So you can use an array instead of doing each one separately, and the benefit to doing it this way is that you don't have to like duplicate your work. And then this, you don't need to do this, you just do Okay. This gets me the same exact behavior. And then this, instead of an if statement at all, You do one if statement that says if i is greater than or equal to zero and i is less than five. And doing it this way means that you only have to write this if statement instead of the five layered one. And by doing it this way, I can add more games too. So this is the same exact thing, same exact result here. I chose World of Warcraft, except all with one line. But I could add like four more games here without really much more work. I update these. And again, you can use a variable even for these too. You can use as long as this has enough, do 100 games potentially, this all becomes like that. And that way you can add more games, however many you want. And it all still works, okay? That's one of the strengths of using an array instead of just using uh, if statements. None of this code changes, all right? Okay, so this answer two. All right, so let's do question three. Ask the user for any number other than five until the user enters the number five, okay? So this is going to be a do while. And there's two ways you can do this. You can do do while true. Otherwise, it keeps going. A simple way to do this, you could also do a statement in here and it'll omit the break. 
But I think this is okay too. You could have done a regular while loop too. However, the while loop is basically the same, like this. This is basically just going through a review of how you set up loops. So I can type in then type in 5 and then it exits. Okay? That's because as soon as I get into this if statement, the break will hit, which causes me to exit the loop and then continue with the rest of the program. Okay? Number 4. Write a program that asks the user to enter the number of hours of video games played over summer break by 10 different people. So I'm going to save this guy off. Okay, so this one, I'm also going to use arrays, 10 different people. And let's create those people now. So I'm just going to go down the line here. I'm just literally going through. Whoever's popping into my. Does your name Cody have an E in it? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. Um, all right. So there's my array of people, and then what you do is you're going to ask for. The number of hours of video games played over summer break for those 10 people, which means I also need an int array of hours played, like so. And then what I do is I'll just write a loop. I grab the people at that index. I ask for hours played. And then I'll just inject that directly into my hours array at high. Okay. And here's the kind of neat part about this. So enter hours played for Keith. Okay. Uh, I don't know. A thousand. I'm going to put a breakpoint here now. So you guys can see Can you guys make that out? It's kind of really tiny, huh? This used to actually make it like bigger. I don't know why it's not like beginning it. But it says it has my array of hours. I have 1423 14 23 and then the rest are uninitialized. I mean, I'm updating this hours array based on my array of people. So I have two arrays that are side by side. And these two arrays are parallel to one another. So I know that Keith has a thousand hours played. Okay? And once you have that, you need to find out who had the most hours played of them all. And the best way to do that is to keep track of who currently has the highest number of hours played. So I'm going to show you guys kind of the long way to do this, and then I'll show you guys how to shorten it. I'm going to keep track of variable that's the highest hours played. And I'm going to go through this loop again. Except this time, I'm going to say if hours at i is greater than highest hours, and then at the end, all I have to do is do a C out Right? 
So I'm going to go through several iterations of this. So first thing is just to print out how many hours are played. Highest hours played is 10, which is correct because Chris played 10 hours there. Okay. Now, what if I want to print out the player too? Well, I could do it this way too, which is have a string of highest player and save that off as well. I could do this and save off who the highest player is. Um, so it says John has 2,354 hours played, which is correct because he has the highest. And the way that this works is that as I'm going through this array, I'm just saving off who currently has the highest hours. And as long as no one has anything higher than that, just that's the person that gets it. And so I go through this list top to bottom, and I'm just comparing everyone against the current highest that I've seen so far. So the way that I've done it here works fine, but it gets kind of kludgy because I have two different variables, and I really don't need two variables. In fact, all I really need is the best index here. And if I have something called the best index, I can just do this comparison and just do that instead. Instead of storing off the string and the hours, I just save off which, which index ha is the best one. And then here, this is going to be people at best index. This is going to be hours at best index. It's going to be hours at i. Oops. It's going to be hours at i compared to hours at best index. So if if I just save off the value of which of these indices I'm looking at, so one of these numbers is the answer, right? I only need to know one of these numbers to know who the highest played hour player is and who, who has the highest hours, like their name. And does it get the same result because, let's just put a breakpoint in here. I'm going to return all my hours first. Okay. So this for loop I'm going through right now, it says hours at 1, which is 312, is currently higher than hours at the best index. And best index is 0. So it's saying 312 is higher than 12. Okay, that's what this is. This is currently 312 greater than 12. Since that is the case, I'm going to save off what i is. i is currently 1 into best index here. Okay? This is going to go through the loop again. And the next time this happens, i is now 5. i was 1 before, but now it's 5. So I'm going to save that off here at the best index. And it continues to go through this loop, finding new best people. It hit this three times, essentially, one for each highest that it encountered, until finally it ended up with 7 as being the best person, which happens to be Cody with 2,444. That's you. So here's another way you can do the same problem. Instead of having two different arrays of people and hours, we're going to start doing a little bit of object-oriented programming here. We could just have people as a structure type. And this can have a name and hours here. And instead of having two different arrays here, I can just have an array of people. like so, giving them a name. And the reason why this is nice is because I can do people at i, instead of having two different variables, I just have one, and I use the dot operator to get at that, the member of people. So here, And this is cool because by doing it this way, I can add a whole bunch more information here. Like I can add, um, I don't know, a car they drive. I don't know. 
And the car I drive is obviously going to be a Tesla. Not a Lance. <laughs> my dream car. I wish. Michael. We also drive a Lambo or, or Gini. What is it? Aventador? That's right, right? So does everyone else. So if I do this, I can associate the car that they drive. Testa Rosa. I don't know. I'm giving everyone just the cars that are in balance, in my opinion. What do you get? Take all three. A Pinto. I don't know. I. It's a sleeper, though. <laughs> it's got like 1,300 horses in it. <laughs> uh, and some, I don't know. Uh, what do we want to give AJ? We have like. Um, see, John. <laughs> and uh, you get to. Uh, <laughs> all right. So by doing all this, I can now print out what car they drive. Now I can inject the car that they drive as part of the output. I don't even have to type in the car. I just. No, it's just hours that I type in. Right, so now you can see Keith, 102, and I drive a Tesla Model X, right? By using a structure, instead of having multiple variables for my array, I just have one variable for my array, and everything goes in here. In fact, since we're going to be doing object-oriented programming, I can write a function here that lives inside of people. And guess what? I can just print out name, hours, I can do this, and the nice part about this is I'm not even going to print out best people. I'm just going to print out people at i. I'm going to call a function called print on every person here. What this is going to do is going to print out every person and their car that drive and the hours that they played formatted one time. Okay. You can do more functions too. You can swap two people's cars. And again, I need a I need a temp variable. We just went over these, right? Okay, and we can just swap, I don't know, I'm going to say swap cars with the people at i plus 1. What is this going to do? It's going to swap the person at 4, so that is going to be John. You're going to swap cars with Evan, so you're going to get the Skyline GTR and Evan will have the Viper GTS. And I can swap cars like this. I just call a function called swap cars, and now, uh, oops, I actually want to do this reverse. 
undo this before before I print it out. And by having all this stuff inside the people, John gets a Skyline GTR and Evan gets a Viper GTS. Okay? And this is kind of the crux of object-oriented programming, whereas I write what people are, and I create useful things that people can do with either other people or just things that you can call on them, functions like this. And whoever's writing this just has to call print or swap cars, you know? I could swap cars with anyone, really. But the principle behind object-oriented programming is you create an object that has both things that describe that object and things that you can do on that object, too. All right. Questions on that, the, this stuff here? Uh, are we going to be meaningful structures or classes? So technically, in C++, they're exactly the same, actually. This works exactly the same. The only difference is that, by default, structures, you have free access. You can use all of these uh, without changing anything. Like, these are considered public. Classes, everything's private. everything's private, but that means you just have to do this. These are exactly the same. It's kind of weird because they're the same. So we've actually been using classes already if you've used a structure. The only thing that is, you kind of like, you do separate them out by the fact that structures are public by nature and classes are not. Um, but yeah, we're, there's the, the decision to use one or the other mostly comes down to typically we use structures when most. Mostly, the, the object is data only. Like, it's basically describing what that person is. Well, classes usually, and this is not a hard and fast rule. It really depends on your, your object. But classes typically involve a good mix of describing what that object is as well as things that that thing can do. So we're going to lean more towards classes just because that's kind of what you, know, you typically find in most games, in most high-level uh, AAA title games or just any game engine. Typically, find classes to describe things. But there's nothing really stopping you from calling a structure and making things like this. Doing this is the same exact thing as doing this. Any question, Vince? Uh, I was gonna ask if you want to swap stuff again. Oh, the swap stuff again? Sure. I when we started I kinda lost track of what we went over and now like where do I even put sure. the swap at? Oh you mean for sorting? Okay, I will go over that stuff after I do number five. Okay. okay. Number five is write a program that calculates a random number between 1 to 100, and then the program asks the user to guess the number, and then basically um, the user will continue to guess until he guesses correctly. So this is basically using standard library to generate random numbers. And then what we want to do is we want to have a loop that loops until, they, until the computer has not guessed the answer. And so what you're going to do is you're going to st first start off with the actual, I'm sorry, until the player has guessed the number. You're going to start off with the actual answer which is going to be equal to some random number modulo 100 plus 1. So this is going to be number between 1 to 100. And you're going to ask for a guess. Okay. If the guess is less than the answer, say it's too low. Else, if the guess is greater than the answer, say it's too high. Otherwise, that must mean that they've guessed the answer correctly. Which means that it's going to set this value to true, and then as it hits this loop, it's going to exit. And all you have to do
If say you guessed correctly, Always best to say. Okay, so now I'm just going to run this program here. What is your guess? I don't know. 60, too low. 75, too low. 87, too high. Um, 81, too high. Uh, 78. Hey, I got it. So as soon as you guess correctly, it stops and it says that you exit, right? The tricky part here is flipping it so that you think of a number and the computer is trying to guess it too, which is why that is homework. Um, and you basically continue to guess until the answer is, is guessed correctly. So this is just a simple loop that goes until you've guessed the answer. This thing starts off as false up here. And then when you enter in the number, you compare the number to the answer. And then if you guessed it, then you exit and then you're done. All right, any questions? Yeah, I'm going to put them up on Zool, except for the first one. So I put all five, uh, four of these. I didn't, I didn't bother doing the first one. I mean, I saved it, but it, I overwrote it. So all three of these, all four of these explain the various answers. So you can start with this. Um, answer number four is kind of weird because it has the people with the cars in it, but um, we can do a little bit different. Let's do something a little bit different here. I'm going to go back to the example that Vince was asking for, for um, swapping. Get rid of all these cars that drive nonsense. For swapping, like, with the temp? Or how? Yeah, swapping with temp. I'm just going to update the answer for one so that it's actually more like what it should be. Okay, so let's go over um, swapping. That's weird. All these cars that drive. Sorry. 
Yeah. Hey man, some some people don't even have Nike Airs. That's uh. Okay. All right, so now I'm all set. So what I want to do is if hours at best index is less than hours at i, then best index is equal to i. So this is where we left off with um, the best index that we had, and then we printed out So, and then let's just run this and make sure this thing still works. Okay, that seems correct. One twenty four. So, one of the questions was to modify the program so that it outputs a list in order of hours of video games played by all 10 people. One of the keys to this problem is the ability to swap one person with another in the list. So if I were to try to swap Keith and Michael in the list so that their names were swapped and their hours were swapped too, how would I go about doing that, right? Like I've entered the hours here, I want to swap So whenever you want to swap two variables, let's just say I have a equals 10 and b equals 5. How do I swap these two variables? How do I make b equal to a and a equal to b? Do I just do this? Right. What happens when I do this? Then b turns into 10. A turns into 10. Right? So that doesn't work. So you need a third variable called temp. which means that this temp variable stores off what A was, right? Does that make sense, Vince, like this part here? So if I want to do the same thing for people, it's the same idea, except instead of these two variables, I still have a temp variable. So I'm going to create a string, which is temp. Set it equal to people at one. And people at one. Oops. Save it equal to people at zero to start. So this means that temp turns into P. want this. Tim turns into Michael. Michael turns into Keith and then okay. And this is the same thing you would have to do for their hours as well.
So if I did this correctly, what should happen is when I go to print out every person, I've swapped the first and second ones. So see, Michael is now on the front and Keith is in index one. And their hours are going to get swapped too. And doing this, swapping, is the key to sorting that array based on whichever algorithm you want. And here's what I want you guys to look up, is there's two that I can really recommend. There's really three um, when you're doing this. And the first one is called a bubble sort, and the second one is called a selection sort. This is the simpler one. This is still a pretty simple one, however, it is, when I say simple, I mean it's probably the most basic sort. I'm not saying it's simple to implement in code. I'm just saying that it's the most straightforward logically. And this one is also pretty straightforward. However, it's a little bit more uh, tricky, but it's faster than bubble sort. Okay? It's a, well, it's the slowest real sort. There's something called a BOGO sort. Um, there's something called, yeah, you guys should look up BOGO sort. BOGO sort literally means take the entire array completely randomize it and see if it's sorted. If it's not sorted, just randomize everything again and see if it's sorted. It's, it'd be kind of like taking a deck of 52 cards, shuffling it, seeing if they're all in order. They're not. You keep shuffling it and seeing if it's in order until they finally all end up in the correct way. And I think anything more than seven cards, it takes like a really long time. I think it takes like an order of like millions of hours called a stupid sort. It's called a stupid sort. That's kind of funny. <laughs> um, asymptotically oh, grow. I'm trying to see what the, uh, how long it would actually take. The worst sort. <laughs> yeah. There are, it's funny, there, there are sorts that are intentionally like really awful. <laughs> yeah, throw a deck of cards in the air, pick up the cards at random, and repeat the cards until, repeat that until the cards are all sorted. That's, that's what focus sort is, so don't do that. Um, do bubble sort or a selection sort. Okay. And uh, honestly, this is what I want you guys to do. Go through here, look at these algorithms on how bubble sort is implemented. You can even take some of this code here, and you can see here it's actually writing out some of this stuff here. This is basically what I wrote up on the whiteboard here. Feel free to, to take this code verbatim and try it out in your, in your own function, in your own, in your own file. Because uh, what I care more about is that you actually get something working in this case than it is to come up with something on your own. Okay? All right.